Hello, and welcome back to yet another retro channel. Today's video is uh, a bit of a problem. I had a plan for today but that plan is not working out. What happened is during the last two weekend videos, I was testing and repairing, cleaning up, lubricating, getting aligned and calibrated three 1541 floppy drives. If you haven't seen those, I'll put that up in the corner so you can click to them and watch them. But while I was recording the second half of that, I was using this machine. This is machine number one from the Repairathon. Uh, I was using it to test those drives. I was using the Easy Flash cartridge to load and run the 1541 Diagnostics from World of Yanni. And <clears throat> halfway through recording that video, the C64 crashed. Tried rebooting it several times. Uh, with the Easy Flash cartridge installed, all I got was black screen. So I popped out the Easy Flash and booted it. And it booted to basic, but there was no flashing cursor. So I thought, well, sounds like the CIA has gone bad. You won. So I set that set this machine aside and I picked up another C64 from the Repairathon. And started using it and finished up the 1541 video using that. And everything worked fine. And I figured I would just do a quick repair on this machine in the midweek palate cleanser. However, yesterday I came up uh, to the lab and I first set up my uh, ZIF 64 so I could check and make sure that the power and video were still working. I uh, was still set up correctly. Set that aside, brought up machine number one, plugged it in, turned it on, and it magically worked. I didn't do anything to it. I didn't change anything. But that does happen sometimes. Uh, I've, I've seen other YouTubers run into it, and I, I know it does occasionally happen. So I made sure it still worked with the Easy Flash. I made you know made sure the keyboard worked, and I buttoned the machine up and hooked it up with the diagnostics and the full test harness except for the keyboard dongle because I do have this thing closed up and I set it to running diagnostics now it's been running diagnostics for 21 and a half hours now with no errors so this machine is working which is great for the machine but sort of put a a, a big monkey wrench into my plans for today's video um, just so you know, this is still running diagnostics. I can show it to you here. It's still running the diagnostics. I'll let it run through this full cycle for you here so you can see that it's working. It, it's been through 1,300 cycles. So there you go. So... This machine is not going to be what we're going to look at today. So I had to come up with another plan. And honestly, I've been having trouble coming up with another plan. I do have projects in the works. Um, I have quite a few PCBs that I've had printed and have ordered parts for projects that I wanted to build. However, the parts haven't come in. I've got most of the PCBs. Uh, so those won't, those won't work. I can't go back to the Amstrad uh, because I am waiting on belts for the cassette drive. Uh, my next project with that was going to be to open it up and clean, lubricate, and uh, replace the belts in the cassette drive, basically to give it uh, give it its 40-year uh, maintenance. But without the belts, I can't do that. I was also going to build one of the projects I want to build is a TZX Duino. So I can load software easier onto the CPC 464, but I don't have the parts. The little ZX uh, ZX81 
uh, Sinclair ZX81. It still needs a composite board, and that hasn't arrived yet. That's on order from Germany, so it's taken a while. So that can't be my project for today. I have <laughs> a boatload of Tandon TM100-2A double-sided, double-density, full, full height, five and a quarter inch floppy drives that I need to work on, uh, but I'm not ready to start that project yet. Uh, I have a TI-99 uh, 4A. Now, that machine is working, so that was just going to be an exploration. I know there are a lot of videos on those out, on those out already, but I want to do my own exploration of it. It, it. it strikes me as a, an interesting machine. One, because one of my friends had them had one as a kid, and, and he really liked it. But I'm also really intrigued by the 16-bit processor being basically used as 8-bit. Uh, so that won't work. I do have other machines that I want to look at, but unfortunately, some of them I have allocated for later. I have a bunch of TRS-80 Color Computer 2s that I want to look at but I want to save that for Septandi. I have uh, an IBM 5150, a 5160, and a 5162 that need looked at, but those are going to be my uh, projects for December. That doesn't leave me much. So what I thought I would do is I thought we would take a look at this. Now this machine is special to me. This is a Candy Color Computer 3 sold by Radio Shack in the States. And this is actually my Color Computer 3. This is the machine that I had as a kid. Um, I started out, as I've said in previous videos, I started out with, uh, of course, an Atari 2600, as most people did. Got my first exposure to an actual computer when I was in elementary school. One of our teachers took us to the high school to see and use the one computer that the school had at the time, which was a TRS-80 Model 1, and I fell in love. Eventually got my parents to buy me a computer. It was a Commodore VIC-20. I used that for a while, and uh, eventually I migrated to a... Uh, TRS-80 Color Computer 1. Those are the ones in the longer uh, gray case with the chiclet keyboard, uh, 4K of RAM. So I had that for a while, and then I, uh, when they came out, pretty much immediately migrated to the 128K Color Computer 3. It obviously has more memory, has a new graphics subsystem based around the GIMI chip, which is um, a PLCC ASIC application-specific integrated circuit that, that replaced both the VDP and the SAM, the synchronous address multiplexer, to handle both uh, memory access and refresh and video. So it was a much more capable machine. But this is actually the physical one that I used as a kid. I have already done a couple of upgrades to it, I uh, installed a, uh, a Triad 512K card, and uh, I gave it a 6309 processor, which is a slightly faster version of the original processor, which was a 6809. It's primarily a working machine at this point. I don't really need to do anything to it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show it to you. Now, the first thing to be concerned about with a... Color Computer 3 is getting audio and video out of it. Um, the 3 does actually have uh, both RF and composite video and audio. Or composite video and audio. So I could hook this up uh, through composite and that will give us an output. However, the Color Computer 3, one of the other upgrades it had was that it has an analog RGB output, which is on the bottom. That's down here. It's a dual row pin header output. So one of the ways you can get video out of it 
is use a Raspberry Pi and build a, or have, buy or build a RGB to HDMI. And that's what we have on here. Uh, the RGB to HDMI has the analog decoder board. And there's another solution to come out of the uh, analog RGB port, and that's this, this, this device. This is called a switcheroo. And I haven't actually tested the switcheroo yet, but it should do the job. Uh, we'll, we'll do RGB to HDMI first, and then I'll hook up the switcheroo cable. Okay, so I have the Coco 3 hooked up through the RGB to HDMI. Now, there's one disadvantage to this setup is that the RGB to HDMI does not do audio. There's no sound. So, I hooked up an external speaker to get sound, and I'm going to plug in, and if you have a color computer, one, two, or three, you could do worse than to get yourself a Coco SDC. This is a SD card reading device for the Coco disk drive emulator, and it simply goes into the card network. Make sure we keep our computer off when we're inserting the number one cartridges. Bring that up and we will come up to the SDC menu. Okay. Um, on the Coco SDC, I've loaded a, an image of the TRS-80 color computer archive. Um, has all kinds of files, utilities, uh, programming tools, ROMs, games all kinds of things and we're going to take a look at a couple of games here um, i have I, I did hook up an external uh, speaker so that we can hear the sound and i've got a microphone pointed at it it won't be great but it's the best i can do at the moment uh, for capturing audio so we're going to go into games and we're going to first take a look at a game that uses Artifact Color. Now, Artifact Color is based on a quirk in the NTSC color encoding that allows you to produce colors by placing pixels in a certain orientation. Several computers use this. The IBM CGA used it. Apple II, Atari 8-bit computers used it, and of course the Tandy Color computers used it. Well, because we're working with RGB and HDMI, that's normally not something that you could reproduce using an RGB to HDMI device or, or the, the uh, you know, something, anything that uses the RGB wouldn't uh, pick up the, uh, the artifact color correctly. However, the RGB to HDMI is capable of handling it in software. So if I go in to this game, uh, and we need to tweak the RGB HDMI settings are on. Now, 
Um, as you see, the word froggy is there in blue. The other thing about the color computer uh, line is the artifacting. Artifacting has to do with the phase of the pixel signals. There's a half, there's a it's half phase out. So sometimes when you start the machine, it'll be in one phase and sometimes in the other. And in general, these games wanted you to play in the other phase than this. And to get that, you would just hit the reset until you get the color you're looking for. And I'm looking for that to become orange, I think. And that's the right. Uh, that's the right color phase. So, as you can see, we have a broader tone, and we're getting color. And this is actually in a high-res mode. This monochrome, and it's using pixel alignment to create those colors. So, if this were not able to create the colors, I'll show you what that looks like. Turn off artifact color. That's what's actually being drawn to the screen. So, we want the artifact color on. Now, uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and uh, get out of this and back to the SDC menu. And I will show you another game. This is a recent release, and what it is, this is not a remake of Donkey Kong. This, as I understand it, and I could be wrong here, is actually a, a uh, port of the arcade version. So it is very faithful to the original. Donkey Kong. Uh, there's also a port like that of Joust, Defender, and I believe Robotron 2084. Uh, those are, as I said, they're not remakes. Or they're, they're not remakes. They're actually ports. They're the original Z80 code translated for the 6809, and uh, they're really, really true to the originals. 
So now I'm going to switch and go to the switcheroo cable and see how that works. Okay, so I now have the Coco 3 hooked up through the switcheroo cable that has three connections to the Coco 3. That's the uh, multicolor ribbon cable, which goes to the RGB port on the bottom of the machine. Now, just uh, FYI, that RGB port does carry both uh, the video signal and it has audio. Um, there is a connection to the composite video output of the Color Computer 3 that serves two purposes. One is this device uses the composite sync signal from that uh, to provide RGB sync. And also, you can switch this into composite mode where it's sending the composite signal into the uh, display device instead of the RGB signal. And there is a reason for that, and I'll explain it. Uh, and the third connection goes to a USB Type A for power. Um, when a SCART device wants to use RGB, it has to provide a 5 volt signal on one of the pins to tell the display device to use RGB. So we need a 5 volt supply. So now that that's connected and I've got the Coco SDC back in again, let's go ahead and boot the machine. Now I am showing this in full, uh, full screen mode this time and the reason for that has to do with my capture setup. My capture PC <laughs> is too slow. Uh, in some modes, uh, the HDMI capture device simply puts too much of a strain on the PC um, and you get stuttering and, and jittering and whatnot. So to limit uh, the stress on the, on the CPU to as little as possible, I can only show one thing at a time with it hooked up this way. Um, I am I do have uh, parts for a new uh, capture PC on the way. Hopefully uh, in the near future I'll have that built and I'll have a PC that can handle <laughs> this capture a little better. But um, we're going to go ahead and load the Donkey Kong game again. And as you can see what I was mentioning before, uh, it says right there on screen, original Z80 code translated to 6809 and arcade hardware emulation by John Kowalski. Uh, he did a very good job with this, and I believe he's responsible for the other ports as well. Um, Joust, Defender, and Robotron 2084, I think, are the other three. They are all very good, very faithful uh, translations of the original arcade version of these games. And you can hear that the audio there is there, and it is coming directly through the switcheroo cable. There are no other connections. Actually, let me mute my mic here so you all... Okay, let's go back and take a look at the other game that we showed before, that Froggy, Frogger clone.
Now you see here, again, this is a result of the attempt to use artifact color in this game. The switcheroo does have a limitation in that it's not a software device, so it has no capability to recognize uh, the artifact color attempt and uh, reproduce it on the screen. So when you're in RGB mode with the switcheroo, you can't get color from artifact color games. Now, there is another way to do this. As I said, the two reasons for the uh, composite video plug uh, going from the switcheroo to the composite video output, one is to provide composite sync for the RGB signal, but the other is so that you can flip a switch right on the top of the switcheroo device and switch yourself into composite mode. So now it's passing through the composite signal rather than the RGB and artifact color works again. Okay, so there you go. With the switcheroo, you get sound, and there is still a way to do uh, composite games. So, those are two video options that I look at when I'm uh, using my Coco 3. Um, both of them are very good, and uh, I will put links to information about them and where you can purchase them in the description below. I think that will do it for today. Uh, I know this wasn't exactly, uh, again, the video that I intended it to be, but uh, I apologize for that and we'll get back on track going forward. We do have more uh, to look at with this. I want to demonstrate the upgrades that have been made to it and uh, I don't know, maybe there's some more that can be done going forward. But again, um, we have the switcheroo and we have the RGB to HDMI. Um, we have the Coco SDC that I do highly recommend. So if you, if you want to get one of those, I'll put a link in the description for this as well. If you like this video, I know it was a little disjointed, but if you like the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel a lot. Uh, leave me your comments. I, uh, I really enjoy interacting with you guys, and uh, you've, you've definitely provided me a lot of information that I didn't have, so I, I appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. Uh, share it to social media uh, or to any of your friends that you, might, that you think might be interested. And uh, don't forget to... Uh, shoot over to my friends in the uh, YouTube Retro Repairers group. Those are Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Joseph Retro Bits, and retro for You. Again, there will be links to their channels in the description below. And uh, thank you to my patrons. I appreciate uh, you guys helping out. I should also mention, if you guys want to... Submit anything to the channel for me to, to look at or to work on as donations. I would greatly appreciate anything you want to send. Uh, so contact me in the email that's uh, listed on my channel. And uh, we can make arrangements for you to, uh, to send that to me. And that'll do it. So everybody, please have a, uh, a great week. Uh, stay healthy. Stay safe, and we will see you next time. Bye.